So a huge big welcome and I'm excited to share how to actually self-test using muscle testing today. Muscle testing is an absolutely amazing way of actually getting biofeedback from our body. If you've ever heard of kinesiology, kinesiology uses the muscles of the body as biofeedback as to what's actually going on. And often we will get a lock, meaning that the muscle will hold strong with a particular statement or an unlock. Uh, if the body feels that that statement is actually untrue or isn't actually, um, there's something in the way, be it an emotional and nutritional uh, cause of what's actually blocking uh, the power, the energy, the electricity, the energy flow to that particular muscle. Each of the muscles in the body are actually connected to a specific organ and each of those organs have a particular emotional theme. The lungs, for example, uh, is based upon uh, generally a theme of grief or feeling inspired in life. Uh, the bladder is often about feeling overwhelmed in life. The liver tends to be more where we hold our anger or resentments uh, a, along with the gallbladder, as well as the stomach can be more around uh, emotions such as contentment or fulfillment in life, satisfaction in life. So each of these organs are connected to specific muscles, um, or not the organs themselves, but the energetic pathways. And each of those muscles, whether they hold strong in the body or don't hold uh, or are difficult to hold, there's muscle weakness um, potentially, that indicates that there is a block within the energy flow system. Now, the energy flow system is based upon the meridian system, which is based upon Chinese medicine, which has been around for about 2,000 years. And each of these meridians have those particular pathways, as we mentioned, that we're actually testing when we have muscle feedback. Now, there is a way that you can actually self-test. Uh, the simplest way that I've ever found is the ring lock method. So basically it's uh, creating, um, touching your index finger to your thumb popping it in here and a hold is uh, we set the intention that that is a yes and an unlock where that's hard for that to hold is actually a no. So this is one of the ways that you can actually start to self-test, be it belief systems, be it uh, particular emotions that uh, may be showing up for you um, or even things like uh, is this particular brand of vitamin C uh, healthy and beneficial for my body? Uh, is this particular food uh, okay for me to eat or is it going to be supportive. Again, the questions that you ask, the quality of the questions that you ask matter, as well as your intention has to be completely free of wanting to influence the outcome uh, in either a yes or no, because the mind definitely can get involved. And uh, just as I was uh, sharing with some friends earlier, uh, you know, like we could be uh, muscle testing, is this chocolate good for me? And <laughs> if you're wanting the chocolate, if you have uh, any intent uh, in wanting a particular outcome, then we can actually influence the muscle testing. So it's really important when you're self-testing uh, to be completely detached from the answer, be it a yes or a no or a lock or an unlock. Uh, it is so important um, to be that. If you feel that you can't uh, be completely uninvested in the outcome or the answer that is coming up for you, then it's best to get somebody else to actually muscle test for you. Uh, even uh, you holding the question in their mind, if you want to really uh, do it in a way uh, that is um, completely free of uh, outside external interference, holding the question in your own mind and get that person to muscle test and tell you the answer. And that is a way that um, you can actually get that information without any external, you know, their bias, their uh, filters going through that particular question of whether they think that's a good idea for you or not. So that is one way that you can work with it. But for now, we're just going to focus on self-testing. This is something that... Um, may take a little bit of time to actually get used to and to actually implement for yourself. And again, it's best done with an energetic of, or energy of playfulness and curiosity. And the more that you play with this, the more you will be uh, certain that it is giving you the most accurate answers as well. Because like anything new, it takes time to develop that skill, to trust that skill and to feel confident within that. Uh, I had shared with a few people earlier, uh, one of the ways that I learned to muscle test is using uh, my uh, finger on top of another finger. And that is a strong yes. Yes, and that is a no. Uh, now, <laughs> that took me about 12 months of playing with that. Um, if I 
Uh, so it is a way, um, the more that you practice, the more that you play with this, again, uh, definitely is very, very helpful. So as we demonstrated earlier, this is a strong lock. This is a yes. And this is a no. And if you just set the intention around that, and then you can say, my name is Sally. And that's obviously my name. <laughs> my name is Sally. You can see I'm pulling like literally as hard as I possibly can. If I said, my name is Bob, my fingers pull apart immediately. Uh, you can say, you know, this guy is blue. The sky is brown. Uh, now that might be <laughs> be true if you've got a dust storm or something else. And I was actually thinking of that in my mind as I was actually doing that. Um, but you can be like, the sky is blue, the sky is green. Um, again, your intention around it and what you're seeing or visualising in your mind, I, as I was saying that, I literally was taken to a moment of uh, remembering driving through probably the worst dust storm I'd ever been to. So again, that is a clear demonstration of how our minds can actually run interference um, with the muscle testing at times as well and again how it can also be true um, so my body was like yes I remember a time in the past when the sky was brown so that was why it was showing as a yes Clearly, I've never seen a green sky, so that was an unlock. Um, so again, like I said, be playful with this particular energy. Now, you can also get an emotions chart, which you can download off the internet. Uh, even if you just uh, Google searched emotions chart, uh, there will be like uh, many different emotions charts that come up. Uh, the one that I've got is actually a, what's called a five elements um, chart. It's got the fire, the water, uh, the wood, uh, the earth and the metal. <laughs> Um, uh, factors in there, as well as our governing and central or central and governing meridians as well. So each of the meridians that run through the body that are connected to our organs uh, are actually located within this five elements chart as well. So you'll see at the top, uh, we've got small intestine, triple warmer, heart and circ sex, which is circulation and sex meridian. Um, then we've got spleen, stomach, lungs, large intestine, bladder, kidney, gallbladder and liver. And the ones that, so the water ones, um, the kidney and the bladder have very similar emotional themes as do uh, the gallbladder and the liver. And the same with the spleen and the stomach. And um, in metal, we have lung and large intestine. And again, the fire meridian with those four, um, sorry, the fire element with the four meridians in there. All of them have very similar emotional themes, which is why that they're um, placed within those elemental um, properties as well. And then we've got central and governing. Your central and governing meridian basically run up the front um, and down the back as well. So basically those two are the holding vessels for majority of our energy. And then that energy is dispersed out into the other uh, organ meridians. So what you can actually do, the way that you can actually start muscle testing for yourself uh, as well is actually just doing a basic clear, which a basic clear would look like um, if you're feeling um, just a little bit out of sorts or perhaps agitated uh, and you're just like, I feel like there's an emotion in the way that is um, impacting the way that I feel. You can also test that. Is there an emotion that's impacting the way that I feel? And for me, that is showing a yes. And then I could actually go through and muscle test as to which one that that actually relates to. Is it in fire? Um, and that's showing as a yes. And so, again, being clear in your intention from the start, is it a yes or is it a no? Is that the question that you're asking yourself? Um, so it is in fire. Is it in triple warmer? No. Is it in circ sex? No. Is it in heart? Yes, it is. Is it love? Um, Self-love. Um, so that's actually what's testing up. So it's under the theme of love. And then we go self to self, self with others, uh, others uh, to self. Um, it might be self to money. It could be self to uh, business. There can be so many different factors that you can actually muscle test to get further clarity of where that's actually going. So um, that is actually indicating I could do a little bit more work on my self love because it's love and it's self to self. Um, within that, that was actually what was testing. Now, in order to clear that, we can just hold, there's uh, ESR points, which is emotional stress release points. And they're basically above uh, the eyebrows on the forehead. Um, or you can literally just hold your entire hand across your forehead. So we're just going to hold that for a minute um, or so. 30 seconds to a minute is generally long enough. And generally, you'll have some form of release. For me, um, personally, normally I yawn, particularly when I'm rubbing uh, the neuroemotional points, which I won't teach in this specific video. Uh, but generally, um, 
uh, there'll be some form of like a sigh or just a relaxation in your body, some form of shift that lets you know something is shifting. Sometimes uh, when we're shifting energy, it is very, very, very subtle and you don't necessarily feel like a lot of difference. Uh, however, I've uh, experimented with this for quite a long period of time. And I know for sure when I do these kinesiology clears and balances, my heart rate variability, which is an indicator, your heart rate, HRV is an indicator of how adaptable and flexible we are to stress. So that is actually the higher the HRV, the more uh, resilient we are, the more able we are to cope with stress. It's actually a very, very good sign of health and well-being. My HRV, whenever I've done these kinesiology balances, has literally gone through the roof um, compared to my normal baseline amount. So uh, again, there's um, in, in my experience, there's definitely evidence that things are operating on a deeper nervous system level that really support these energetic clears as well. Okay, so I'll just muscle test that again. Is this now 100% clear? Is there anything else to clear around the topic of love or the emotion of love with self? No. So that is now 100% clear. Now, as I mentioned um Previously, uh, to some other dear friends, this is not like a one-time certificate. It doesn't mean that in two or three days' time, if I have an experience or have negative thoughts about myself, that my self-love is not going to be impacted again. I think that's really important to remember that these are moment-to-moment -moment clears. And whilst um, the more that we actually do those clears and the higher our frequency, the less those lower energy emotions tend to occur or happen. But life still happens and there's still things that get in the way. And the more that we're doing those clears um, I tend to believe, you know, our thoughts, our beliefs, our feelings are like layers of onions, basically. And so each time we do that, we're peeling off another layer of the onion and we're actually getting closer and closer and closer to where all of that residual can literally just drop away. And we come back to that sense of wholeness, that sense of well-being, that sense of um, completeness within ourself as well. And a lot of our... Um, what I believe our healing consists of is unlearning a lot of the conditioning and programming uh, that we growing up as well as to who we believed that we needed to be in order to be accepted, loved, belong and fit in, as opposed to our unique soul essence that is here living from our heart um, very uh, easily and joyously being able to express itself from an unlimited perspective. So uh, that's just my take on it. The more that we can actually clear expression, the happier, the healthier, and the more well-being we'll have overall physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. So I hope you've enjoyed today's training on how to actually self-test. As I mentioned, uh, when I was uh, teaching myself self-testing with this particular method, uh, it did take me up to 12 months before I felt 100% totally confident with that. So play with this. Know that it will take a period of time. The more you do this, the more confident you'll become, the more you can actually trust in that process. And uh, it just gets to be another beautiful tool for yourself moving forward in this beautiful, wonderful journey of life. Have a magnificent day.